Uh, hello, welcome to Verblink. Hi, Hi Narelle. Hi, Hi viewers. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley, and uh, today we were we're going to conclude our little mini series uh, on TOEFL. Speaking, we're going to look at uh, integrated questions number five and six, the last two questions of the TOEFL speaking test. These two questions will require you to uh, listen only, no reading. They are integrated tasks. You will listen to a conversation in number five, and uh, then you will respond to the question. Uh, question five is actually kind of a two-part thing. It's summary and opinion. Uh, 20 seconds preparation time, so very limited preparation time, 60 seconds speaking time. And then question number six, which we'll look at as well, will be a lecture. And uh, again, 20, uh, you will speak 20 seconds only, preparation time, and 60 seconds speaking time. So uh, we're going to jump right in and look at a couple examples and talk about strategy of how to answer these questions. Uh, okay. Um, let me just say hello to Gregory. Hello again. Hello again. Hi, nice hi. And <laughs> nice to see you again. And and David. Hi, David. Hello again, teacher. Good to see you. Hello again. Okay. Let's jump right in. Uh, I'm going to do a screen share, and we'll talk about question. Number five, we're going to listen to a converse. Well, actually, we're going to look at the transcript um, and just read it. But normally, you would, of course, be listening and you would hear it. We're going to look at the transcript so we can maybe get a better idea of what they're saying. All right, first, you'll, you'll get a visual clue. You'll obviously see a picture, which, OK. Two people looking at information, pointing at it. Obviously, they're going to have a conversation. The narrator will introduce uh, the conversation by simply saying, now listen to a conversation between two students. Uh, OK. <sighs> All right. Uh, Narelle. Yes. Would you mind? Uh, Taking the part of the woman here mm -hmm. and reading the transcript. And uh, let's see, David. Yes, yes. Could you take uh, the man's part? Of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, Narell. Yes. Please begin. Okay, uh, teacher, who is this for you? Sorry? Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I was opening the screen. Um, how's the paper coming along, Chris? Coming along? You're joking, right? Stuck, huh? Yeah, yeah. The problem is I can't get started. I mean, I have all the information I want to use. That's the, frust the frustrating thing. For once, I start my research early rather than leaving, than leaving it to the last minute. Aha. Uh -huh. Have you considered just sitting on the computer and making yourself type? Sometimes that helps if you have sometimes that helps if you have a writer's block. Just type in whatever comes to mind. Aha, uh -huh. you can't force inspiration, but if you just let yourself relax and let your thoughts flow and type them out, you will eventually get into the rhythm and you will start writing good stuff for your paper. Mm, I don't know. Okay, well, uh, the other thing is, what about making an outline? An outline? Sure, 
your research is done right. So take your note cards and organize them on paper first. See like here is the main point I want to make in this paragraph and here are the three details I want to use to support it. I see. And you do that for each section of your paper. You have the structural all mapped out and when you are writing, you just need to connect the pieces. It can be a lot easier to be with. Uh, okay. Now, I love your uh, intonation. It's like I really? was there. I felt like I was watching a movie. Okay. Anyway. Awesome. You make my day happy. <laughs> I'm not going to stay south today because... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know you. You have good intonation when you're reading uh, dialogue. You get all the parts. Uh huh. Ah, uh, uh, all the uh, the not actually uh, vocabulary, but expressive. Oh, expressive! Not the expressive, vocabulary. Oh. Right, the expressive sounds and um, interjections is what they're called. That, English speakers really do make. We really do that all the time. Ah, aha, oh, ah, all those yeah. things. We do that in real life, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm the narrator again. The speakers discuss two possible solutions for the man's problem. Describe the problem, then state which of the two solutions you prefer and explain why. Okay, this is a two-part question. Uh, all right. Uh, describe the problem, then state which of the two solutions you prefer and why. Okay. Now, uh, okay, who would like to try this? Gregory, you want to give this a shot? What shall I do? What shall you do? Uh, okay. Describe the problem and state which of the two solutions you prefer and explain why. Okay. You'd see this for 20 seconds. Uh, what? No, you wouldn't. Uh, you'd see this and then preparation time, 20 seconds, response time. You would both hear and see this question. So this is the task. Uh, so you need to describe what the problem is, then state which of the two solutions you prefer. And then you have to give your opinion, or you have to use supporting sentences to say why you agree. The problem, what's the problem? I uh, invent the problem, or you say me what the problem No, 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 okay, let me help you out here. Going back to the beginning of the conversation, how's that paper coming along, Chris? Coming along, you're joking, right? There's the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I try. Okay. All right, uh, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Uh, the problem is uh, I don't know what is coming along, so I have to uh, <laughs> two ways. <laughs> Or uh, guess what is it, or not to guess and try uh, <laughs> ask uh, my teacher uh, what is uh, what is good. Uh, the, the, the first one is uh, suspicious because uh, I can guess not right. Uh, uh, the second more sure, but uh, it embarrassed me. Uh, okay, so, Gregory, that was terrific. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, I can give you an answer if you want. Sure. All right. Uh, okay, Gregory. I actually. But uh, I like uh, his answer. I, I like do too. That was answer. terrific, actually. And uh, you supported your your response with uh, good supporting sentences, actually. You know, that's funny. In an actual TOEFL test, that would probably get you at least a two, even though you're not answering the task at all, a two, possibly a three, because it was such a very good answer. <laughs> right? It was really actually very good, Gregory. 
Okay, uh, Narell. I think okay, it's a lot um, more. Maybe I I blame myself, Gregory. I, I wasn't clear in my instructions and in what we were doing. If anyone should be embarrassed, it should be me. Okay, Narell. Go ahead. Okay, the man's the man's problem. Uh, problem is that he can't start uh, writing his paper. So her uh, female friend suggests two solutions. First, he could uh, sit on his computer and just start writing. And the second suggestion is that he make an outline. He could make an outline. Uh, if I were the man, I would choose the second solution. I don't think that the first solution will work. Because if you sit on your computer and just start writing, maybe you will you will be lost because writing randomly is not a good idea. However, the second solution is better because if you sit on your computer with an outline in your mind, then you will be sure that you are not going to spend your time just randomly, but writing an essay with a good structure. That's why I prefer the second solution. Whoa. That was undoubtedly a four out of four, po four possible points. Uh, I, I'm 100% sure. Wow, oh, that thank was you. really, really, really terrific. That was actually awesome. Uh, okay. Um, you nailed it. And not only did you nail it, let me uh, show you something. A suggested template for this type of question. Uh, well, oh, first of all, welcome to the class, Samira. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. Hi, Samira. Uh, Hi. Uh, welcome to the class. All right, we're talking about TOEFL uh, speaking here, so we're looking at, um, I know you, you came in a little late, but bear with me, I'll uh, talk to you in a minute, and uh, all right, a sample response, this is kind of what TOEFL suggests you do, uh, wait, wrong, wrong one, okay, here we go. The state, the, and uh, actually Norell very closely followed this typical response or this sort of template that really honestly TOEFL expects you to do. They expect they expect you to use a pretty strict uh, structure when you answer the question. State the problem. Okay. Uh, which Norell did perfectly. And then state the solutions, which Norell again did uh, all right. Talk about whatever uh, whatever comes into his head. The second is to make an outline. State your preference. Uh, again, well, you, you did this. Uh, you absolutely followed this template absolutely perfectly. Um, uh, also. What Narelle did actually, Narelle's answer was better than this template, and I'll tell you why. Uh, she gave reason one, a positive reason why she felt the outline was better, or uh, why uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, you went the other way, uh, my mistake. You talked about why the first solution, just free writing, writing whatever comes into your head, brainstorming, different ways to talk about that, to express it in English. Um, didn't seem like it would work, and then you actually used a very nice transitional word. However, uh, I think writing an outline is better, and then she gave a detail or reason why she thought so. So, actually, that's a that's a, an excellent strategy. I don't like this idea, and then uh, some detail why you don't like it, because blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then using a transition, however, on the other hand, conversely, one of those kinds of introductory wor uh, phrases or words, and then another supporting reason. That, that was uh, an, just an awesome example, actually. 
Wow, I, I can't really imagine any better than that. I could not have done better than that, quite honestly. Really, that was awesome. Uh, Thank I am, you. I am absolutely 100% positive that would have been a 4 out of 4. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you for that excellent example. Thank you, teacher. Okay, uh, you're welcome. Uh, can I, Samir, I, I don't, I, have we met before? I think this is the first time I've seen you in one of my yeah, classes. Yeah, this is the first time, yeah. This is the first time. Okay, before we jump to the next question, question six, uh, Samira, where, where are you from? I'm from Algeria, from Africa. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, are you preparing to take um, one of the many kinds of uh, English equivalency exams, like TOEFL, for example, TOEFL. or IELTS? Oh, TOEFL for um, uh, for May. So I'm trying to um, to catch up, but really I feel like I'm behind my studies. So yeah, I need more. Okay. All help. right. So you're taking the TOEFL in May. Would this be this will be your first time taking the exam? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you've got March, April. I don't know when you're taking it in May. I do recommend minimum of two months preparation time, three months at least. More is better, but okay. All right. Um, all right. Well, you know, s stick with it and practice, 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 practice. That's my first advice. Uh, okay. We're going to now look at uh, speaking question number six. This is a summary, another summary question. You're going to have to summarize information. Uh, all right. A uh, quick howdy to Zinu. Zinu, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Nice to see you again. All right, uh, get back to you in a bit. All right, let's uh, let's look at this question. All right, first of all, on the lecture questions, actually, all the lecture questions, whether they're in speaking or listening or writing, uh, they'll introduce the idea by showing you a picture. Really, pay attention to this picture because it you may actually get some information, especially with the lecture questions. The conversation questions, wow, okay, you can see two people having a conversation, not much help. However, look here, uh, you see some a teacher standing in front of a whiteboard. She's got a really basic outline here with two points. She's got organic gems, amber, tree sap, all right, B, what, What's that? Coral, calcium, carb, something, carotene. Hmm. There may be some keywords or a little information we can uh, steal away from this. So use whatever you can. Uh, you will hear this. You will not see this transcript. All right. In this question six. So obviously you need to listen carefully. They will give you a heads up. They will. The narrator will say. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now listen to a part of a talk in an archaeology class. All right. So you know the subject is archaeology. You know you have to start listening, active listening, intense concentration. I will be the professor. Uh, okay. I'm going to share the this uh, do the screen share with you here. Okay. So you can see it. Remember that in the actual test you wouldn't be able to see this, but just so you get an idea. All right, here I go. Most gems weren't formed by life processes, so they're very durable. 
If you're one of the lucky few archaeologists who discover an ancient crown inlaid with, say, rubies, you'll probably have to worry more about damage to the metal than to the stones themselves. But some gemstones are organic. They're more fragile and can present special problems if you've dug them up and need to preserve them. One example is amber, which formed millions of years ago from tree sap. The tree sap breaks down on exposure to air, but if the tree died and was buried in an airtight space before decaying, the sap could harden into amber. That's where amber gets its liquid clarity and smoothness. Uh, now, once it's hardened, you don't need to worry about oxygen breaking it down. What you do need to worry about is, well, think of it as being like hardened wax. If it comes too near to heat, it may melt or deform. Also, contact with oils or strong acids can injure the surface and make it cloudy. The basic thing to remember is Avoid sudden temperature changes and any contact with cleaning solutions and other such chemicals. Another organic gem is coral. Coral is sort of the skeleton of creatures from the ocean floor, made of calcium carbonate, uh, often with carotene mixed in. That's what makes it pinkish. It, it makes it pinkish and orangish. You don't have to worry about melting coral, but you do have to worry about scratching it. Calcium carbonate is naturally rather powdery, so it chips easily. Also, it's very porous, so it absorbs liquids quickly. You need to make sure that you never soak coral in water or pour chemicals over it. There we go. Okay. Using points and examples from the talk, explain how archaeologists must take the origins of amber and coral into consideration when caring for them. All right, now you'd see the screen like this. You'd have 20 seconds preparation time, 60 seconds speaking time. All right. Make sure, our first thing, we have to make sure we understand the question, what are we being asked to do? Using the points and examples from the talk, uh, our main emphasis, explain how archaeologists must take the origins of amber and coral into consideration when caring for them. Okay. Uh, all right, so here we go. Who wants to give this a try? David? Samira? Zingyu? Samira, you want to give it Hello. a try? Uh, lady first. Lady first. Ladies first. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, David is really, it's his turn. David, are you up for it? Um, or you want I don't back? listen. All the conversation, all the dialogue, teacher. Sorry, I don't listen. Uh, all the dialogue. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, Samira or Zingyu. Zingyu, you you want to try it? Samira's new. You gotta give her a break. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Zingyu, you want to try it? Mm. Uh. I do my best to try this. All right, <laughs> go for it. And and, mm. and when you when you dug the when you uncover the sense the environment will change, the temperature will change, and uh, you should be careful 
about uh, the situation. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay, actually, I made a big mistake. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I should have told you, in this TOEFL speaking test, you will only hear the information, but you are allowed to make notes. Okay? I'm going to read this again. All right? This time, uh, grab yourself a pencil or a pen and paper. Make notes, being especially careful to think about main point and then details. All right? Main point and details. There's always going to be at least two main points, and you should be able to talk about at least two main points. Consider that. That's always the case in TOEFL. Um, there are some circumstances, maybe where you're listening to a lecture in listening or writing, where maybe there's three points, but at least as far as speaking, you're going to have to talk about at least two of the points in order to get an optimum score. Let me read this again, and I, I forgot to tell you guys, really, this is impossible. If you don't make notes, you can, I couldn't possibly do this from memory and get a high score. I don't know who could. You'd have to really be a, a super genius. Okay, one more time. Take notes. Okay, what are you taking notes of? The, you have to understand your topic sentence will be what is the topic? Okay, so it's very important write down in your notes what is the topic, what is the professor talking about, point one, supporting information, point two, supporting information. All right? One more time. Uh, okay, most gems weren't formed by life processes so they're very durable. If you're one of the lucky few archaeologists who discover an ancient crown inlaid with, say, rubies, you'll probably have to worry more about damage to the metal to the, than to the stones themselves. But some gemstones are organic. They're more fragile and can present special problems if you've dug them up and need to preserve them. One example is amber which formed millions of years ago from tree sap. The tree sap breaks down on exposure to air, but if the tree died and was buried in an airtight space before decaying, the sap could harden into amber. That's where amber gets its liquid clarity and smoothness. Uh, now, once it's hardened, you don't need to worry about oxygen breaking it down. What you do need to worry about is, well, think of it as being like hardened wax. If it comes too near to heat, it might melt or deform. Also, contact with oils or strong acids can injure the surface and make it cloudy. The basic thing to remember is avoid sudden temperature changes in any contact with cleaning solutions and other such chemicals. Another organic gem is coral. Coral is sort of the skeleton of creatures from the ocean floor made of calcium carbonate, often with carotene mixed in. That's what makes it pinkish or orangish. You don't have to worry about melting coral, but you do have to worry about scratching it. Calcium carbonate is naturally rather powdery, so it chips easily. Also, it's very porous, so it absorbs liquids quickly. You need to make sure that you never soak coral in water or pour chemicals over it. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. Now, who wants to try? David? Samira? David? Samira? Or I'm going to have to give it back to Norell again. <laughs> no volunteers, huh? David, no, no go. Mm, okay, teacher, but I'm going to. Yes, I go for think. it. Mm, the question is okay. Explain. Okay, um, 
if you are an archaeologist and you find some uh, gems, uh, you have to take care. You have to to worry about about how about how you will carry uh, because these kind of gems um, are, are are organic. So uh, they are more fragile uh, than, than, than others. Uh, for example, this kind of, of gems uh, present uh, problems to when when you are doing the excavation uh, and when you have to preserve or take care. Uh, basically, um, basically you you need to know uh, that uh, you need to know that you have to avoid um, so uh, temperatures uh, temperatures change and don't do contact with other strange chemicals for preserve the gems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> salt. <laughs> I think ah. it's salt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> it, it, your response could have definitely been better. First of all, first piece of advice, Samira, David, all right, all you guys. Uh, if you're taking the TOEFL exam, you can refer back to the actual materials. So uh, for your topic sentence, your beginning sentence, the pr uh, you're going to just state something like uh, the professor talks about, all right, the professor lectures about, the man lectures about, uh, uh, the man explains, okay, that's how you're going to start. You're going to say what the basic idea is, what's the topic of the lecture. Uh, Samira, what's the topic of the lecture? Oops. Maybe it's uh, origins of amber. More no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nero, I'm going to uh, ask you last. Zingyu, what's the topic of the lecture? Oh, that's right. Uh, one more time, you're uh, echoing you're severely. severely. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Pro zero game. You're echoing so bad, I can't understand. Understand. He said he gemstones. Said gemstones. 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 Okay, okay, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. David, what, David do what do you think? Hmm. <laughs> It's about so <laughs> oh the oh the, the echo is coming from Samira. Samira. Oh. Okay. I'm mean, use my microphone. Yeah, you should yeah, use, you a head use a headset head and oh, microphone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <coughs> Pardon me again. Uh, David, what is the uh, topic of the, the lecture? The topic is. The origin of the gems and and how to preserve them. Okay, getting closer. Uh, how to preserve them is the controlling idea of the lecture. Yeah, all right, that's really really close. Uh, Norel, what do you think? Well. Um in this lecture, the professor discusses uh, organic gemstone yes. and uh, and how archaeologists must take the origin of amber and coral into consideration when carrying for them. Okay. Now, notice what Norel did. She used a strategy. She used the question to answer the question I asked her. So your first sentence or when you begin, you can actually use information from the question. However, Norel, you shouldn't actually do it word for word because that would count against you. 
you have to be careful about paraphrasing or rephrasing the information. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So even saying something is, but you exactly nailed the topic. Yes, it's organic gemstones. The professor talks about organic gemstones and how uh, uh, we need to consider uh, special um, methods of caring for them. Okay, something like that. There, there's probably a thousand ways to paraphrase that. But maybe I, maybe I may say, teacher, may I say my introduction? Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe I say in this lecture, uh, the professor talks about uh, organic gemstone. He, the professor gives he gives two examples, amber and coral. And then he goes with his lecture to explain how archaeologists should be very careful w when uh, they are caring for them. Yeah, sure. If you want to break it into three sentences, that's one way. That's just a different way to paraphrase. It's actually a good way because then you're not really... You, it forces you to use different sentence structures so you're not going to say it word for word. All right, that's... Uh, okay, that's a strategy we haven't even looked at, but yeah, that works. Um, no problem. Okay, and you can use words. He can. Uh, he talks about organic gemstones. He continues by introducing amber and coral, and discusses how uh, archaeologists should take special precautions when caring for them. Oh, ooh, that was really good. Okay, obviously there's many possibilities. Okay, that's our start. That's how we're going to begin. Then, of course, we have to give the details. And, uh, of course, as I told you, you're making notes. Obviously, the main points are amber, number one, coral, number two. So th then you have to talk about the details. All right. Uh, Samira, you, you want to try it? Yes, Come I'm on. here. Try what? what? Try what? Uh, try, try responding, responding give, answering the question. Uh, All right, we've given you a good idea how to start. You're going to talk about 60 seconds. Give it a try. Hopefully you'll make a lot of mistakes so we can talk about them and help you improve. <laughs> Come on, give it a try. Be brave. Be brave. <laughs> you want to try? I, I won't force you if you don't want to. But Actually, it's not clear in my mind. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, what I understood was right. But um, I think... Um, Professor talking about uh, um, um, archaeology, archaeology, um, and um, how to save uh, gems. And um, I don't know. I didn't understand how he jumped or how he uh, jumped to talking about uh, about amber. Um, but this is almost what I got from this lecture. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did you take notes, take notes, Samira? Um, actually, I didn't understand um, the main idea, so yeah, I couldn't um, go with the lecture. Okay. You couldn't yeah. follow the lecture. Follow the lecture. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, did you take did notes? You take notes? Uh, no. Okay. This is impossible to do this speaking test unless you take notes. You need to, as you practice, Samira, take notes. I, I, I think it is, seriously, I think it is impossible to get a perfect score or a very good score uh, on the TOEFL exam if you do not take notes, especially in the speaking part. Uh, I, 
I think most people would add it. You know, your score is zero, one, two, three, four. I think most people who don't make notes are going to the best they can possibly do is a score of three. In my opinion, there's no way you could remember and organize in that short of time. You only have 20 seconds to prepare. Okay. Okay. And the other additional thing here. This will, this, will, Samira, Samira, this will actually, this will actually help, you help you to understand, understand and, follow. and follow. You're making, you're notes, making notes and you're, and you're aha, aha organic, organic gemstones. gemstones. That's, That's the topic. The topic. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, they're talking, talking about, about two, two. Amber, amber, coral. coral. Okay. Um, um, it, will it will actually help actually you to help follow, you follow it, it, as well. it as well. So it's so it's it. it it will help you organize your own speaking. It will help you remember vocabulary to use. It will also help you listen and understand if you're just just quickly writing down words that seem important. Okay. So there's multiple reasons. All right. All right. Norel, do you want to try this out? Okay. Okay. Um, in this lecture, the professor explained. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Do I start with the answering the question directly, or I have to make an, an intro? Yeah, the whole the whole shooting match, the whole thing, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, the lecture is about uh, gemstone, organic gemstone. Uh, the professor gives two examples of organic gemstone, amber and coral, and then uh, he explained how archaeologists must be careful uh, when they are extracting those uh, kind of gemstone. Um, for amber, for example, um, he says that archaeologists should be careful with acid and other chemicals because those kind of uh, materials can um, really damage amber because it has uh, because uh, it can harden amber and uh, then he uh, says that coral uh, are found uh, by uh, with uh, ca calcium carbonate and here also he worm or maybe um, he says that archaeologists should be archaeologists should be careful when they are extracting coral because they can melt in contact with the heat. I think and this is how we explain it. Hello? Hello. I, sorry, I <laughs> muted myself. Okay. Uh, I don't know where I put my notes. Um, What's that? Anyway. I wasn't following my notes. <laughs> you, were, you weren't following your notes. <laughs> yeah, because, well, well, because um, I took some notes at the first place, but when you give the lecture a second time, so I did another taking note. Uh -huh. So I wasn't sure which one which one to look at, so I didn't look at any one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Uh, right. And to tell you the truth, the volume was very low, so I was having a hard time hearing you. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's your oh. problem or my problem on my end. Mm. So I... I only was getting the the gist or the kind of the summary of what you're saying. Um, sorry to say, so I don't have a lot of feedback other than you said those kind of gemstones. It should be those kinds. Kinds. Be careful mm -hmm. about kind and type and style if you're talking about more than one thing. Uh, one thing uh, which none of you really kind of caught. In the lecture here, uh, when they do this, uh, be mindful of this. You may hear this. Okay, notice the way this is written, this section right here. So you would hear this like this. 
what you do need to worry about is, well, think of it. You're going to hear an intonation. Uh, is a rising. Well, you're going to hear a rising intonation. This is actually an indicator there's going to be a very good, or very relevant, very useful example coming up, most likely. Especially then you hear, think of it, think of it as being like hardened wax. All right. You can use this. So and then it talks about how heat destroys it. Uh, if I'm making notes here, most of this beginning part, be aware of this as well. All of this garbage at the top of the lecture is totally useless to you. It is. They may, int they may use two or three sentences to actually introduce the topic. This is the important part. Uh, some gemstones are organic, okay, as opposed to most gems. They're fragile. All right, that's important. You're only really listening for keywords. Now, what am I going to write down? Uh, I'm, I, if I'm writing notes, okay, for example, organic gemstones. All right. <clears throat> I might write capital T dash organic gemstones. Notes. Uh, then I hear one example. Okay, I'm going to write the number one is amber. Amber. I'm going to write that down. Blah, 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 tree sap. Blah, tree sap. Blah, 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 sap. Tree. Oh, my goodness. I've heard tree sap three times. This is obviously an important word and very relevant to what he's saying. I probably write down, like a, just like an outline, one, amber. Uh, and then underneath, from tree sap. It's important. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, I don't need to worry about this. And then I would hear this part. You do need to worry about, okay, maybe I'd write down wax, d uh, arrow, heat, melt. <coughs> uh, then maybe I wouldn't catch anything to, uh, and then avoid. Remember, at the end, they're probably going to summarize some information. The basic thing to remember, avoid sudden temperature changes and any contact with cleaning solutions. So there's two kind of supporting details, and they've been summarized here. All right? Uh, okay, same thing for coral. Uh, again, they summarize at the end. Notice this. You need to make sure you never soak coral in water or pour chemicals over it. So... You've got um, most basic notes, if you're making notes, should have organic gemstones, one amber, heat, uh, at least heat, cleaning solutions, one, two, coral, uh, one, two, uh, water, or soak, or some such word, chemicals at the very minimum it's hard to make notes while you're listening I know that but you're just you're not writing down entire sentences you're writing down very quick words <clears throat> okay hang on a second let me show you a possible template for answering this question okay all right Okay, a sample response might be something like this. State the main idea. We covered this according to the professor. Both amber and coral can be harmed by certain processes. Okay, uh, I can also say the professor talks about. According to the professor, the professor discusses. Really, I think it would be better to say organic gemstones. Specifically, he talks about amber and coral and how they can be harmed in certain processes. Okay, this is a very basic, very basic statement here, but we kind of covered that. And then you're going to go, uh, you're going to introduce your two reasons, always. Uh, it was very clear from this lecture, amber is one and coral is the other. All right, all right. First, he t and you can continue to use phrases like, first, he discussed. 
Uh, his first example of organic compounds is amber. Uh, however you want to say it. Okay, reason and detail. Because of this fact, amber can be damaged by heat, oils, and acids. Uh, all right. In this case, they're using the strategy of linking number one to the main idea that uh, of how the coral and amber can be harmed, which is your main idea. Okay, so look at this sentence. Thus, archaeologists have to be careful not to expose amber to high temperatures, which can affect the shape of the amber. Also, some liquids will make the amber cloudy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think that's... All right, they say liquids instead of chemicals, but okay. Uh... Reason number two, coral is uh, made up of skeletons of ocean. Then they talk about coral. It's brittle. It can be scratched or chipped. Uh, also, it can absorb liquid, which was that word porous. All right. Therefore, uh, archaeologists must be careful not to soak coral or handle it roughly. Fine. Okay, once again, they're using lots of linking phrases according to... Uh, because of thus, these are extremely important. Uh, you can definitely get a score of three, but probably not a score of four by doing this. Okay, so they're they're kind of giving mini summaries. All right, they uh, definitely talk about amber. What damages amber? Okay, and then a, a, a little more detail and a link back to the idea. Like a mini summary is what it is. Okay. Uh, right. Any any questions about this? Zingyu. You still there? Or Hello. Again? Hello again. Oh. Uh, this is my first time to TOEFL? make this exam. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm trying to explain it. You know, here's a here's a basic template. Uh, the main thing is okay. Uh, the main thing is all right. Well, this is our last TOEFL class. The main thing is uh, TOEFL is different than IELTS or other exams in that you're taking a computerized test. So and it's everything is timed, so you you must, as in any of these English tests, you must use your time wisely. So you must have a strategy. You must know exactly what you're going to be doing at any given point in time. For the speaking test in TOEFL, you have you have little introductory pictures. Take a look at them. Get any clue you can. You you have. Uh, Specific times for reading. Two, when in questions three and four, you have 45 seconds to read something that should take about 20, 25 seconds to read. Make notes. Always make notes. You're going to have preparation time and speaking time. So you need to practice and practice with a timer. Every Just go on your browser and click and, and search for a timer. They're very easy to find and they're free. Um, and you're gonna have, you need to practice. Practice making notes. You have to know how your notes, what your notes mean. What does it mean when you draw an arrow or make a star or different symbols? Use symbols. You don't have time to write complete phrases. Okay? Uh, and realize also, the other thing with TOEFL, you're speaking, your response is going to match the sequential, the time order of the actual lecture or conversation. It's easier because no, you'll hear a lecture or 
or conversation in a certain order. You'll make your notes notes in that order, and then you'll from your notes you'll speak in that order. Obviously, or well, should be obvious. Uh, any, any last questions, uh, David? Anything? Any questions or? The the first le the first lecture was easy, but the second was tough. Yeah, because it, yeah. it's many details and many uh, the chemical stuff. <laughs> right, right. Okay, all right. Thanks. Which brings me to another point. Uh, you're going to hear lectures many throughout the TOEFL test, not just in speaking, but also in listening and in writing, for, as a matter of fact. Yes, they're going to use, they're going to talk about a academic topic which is going to include very specific related vocabulary. You do not have to know or use that vocabulary in your response, in, in your speaking response, in your writing response. You don't even have to know what it means. The, the key is to understand basic ideas and understand that TOEFL always has two, 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 two. In writing, they'll lecture. In the listening lecture, there's always at least two things you need to be able to pick out. So look for them. Actively listen for two main points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of the key. Uh, and, and write down the two key points in your notes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't have to understand every word. You just have to understand main ideas. If you noticed in the templates we looked at, the the example templates, which are score four templates, they don't use, you know, they don't use complicated vocabulary whatsoever. Uh, not at all. They use very simple vocabulary. So it's, okay. it's not required to use very technical, specific vocabulary. It won't hurt you. It would certainly help you, but... Uh, okay, um, I'm out of time, so thank you very much, lady and gentlemen. I have to go. Got somewhere to be. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, All right. teacher. See you.